Hey guys, how's it going? We are over on the west side of our house in the Moon Garden, getting ready to plant a new shrub that I'm very excited about. This is a spirea called Glow Girl. So right now you can see mostly just its leaves and the way the leaves look in the spring while well, all season long, they maintain this beautiful kind of chartreuse green, yellowish leaves um, and they bloom white. So you can see all the buds right here, they're starting to bud up, which the buds look a little bit on the pink side which does add a little bit of variance of color. And in this moon garden, we are focusing on shades of green in terms of leaves and then all white blooms. And it's pushing it that the buds are pink, but I think it's gonna add a little bit of textural interest. And technically the blooms are white, so I think we're still good. Um, so all of these buds will turn into beautiful clusters of white blooms um, in the spring, usually late spring, early summer. And this plant grows about three to four feet tall and wide. So I think, it's gonna fit this spot really well. And at this spot is gonna be very interesting because this area is gonna to have to be a fairly well curated space because when you're doing a moon garden and you're dealing with some other elements, like these right here, this is my anchor. These urns, I've got one, two, four of them along this space that I always want to see. So I don't wanna plant anything too tall around the sides or in front of them that masks them. I want to be able to see them from whatever angle I'm looking at this space. Um, and I do wanna make sure that I've also got things that bloom all at all different times of the year so that um, it always looks very pretty. Uh, so I've got my other anchor here are the North Pole Arborvitas, of course, which have grown tremendously. So you might remember, it'll be three years ago, July, that we planted these and they only came to about the middle rail of this fence and they were much thinner than they are now. So they've really broadened out and they're beautiful. This has been Aaron's pet project. He um, had an individual, like they're on their own drip zone. He manages the water and he fertilizes these and he's doing a really, really good job clearly because they're doing so, so well. So you have to imagine that this North Pole Arborvita hedge is a wall eventually because they grow three to five feet wide, 10 to 15 feet tall. So they'll just be this beautiful soft wall of this emerald green color. And then in front, I needed something that has a little bit of visual difference um, and interest. And I think that this will bring it, this is a birch leaf spirea. I've also got white delphiniums. I planted 40 of them. There's eight groups of five and they're kind of dotted along this whole space. That was the first thing that kind of like broke the seal for me. It was kind of hard because I just like, I wanted to make sure that I was making the right decisions in terms of planting. And I don't necessarily want to do repeats of everything in this space but I do think I need to do repeats of some things. Um, so the delphiniums are a very striking tall white spire. And I think having that repeated will be really nice. And then it can be contrasted by this nice soft shrub right here, if that makes sense. I also haven't mulched in this area yet. Um, so the drip tubing, we didn't do a super thick layer last year because we had such an enormous space to do. We just kind of got by with a thinner layer. So we'll need to come through and mulch again. But uh, anyway, I do want to get this in the ground and see how it looks in this space. And you know, it's likely I'll probably want to add more, but I do have some instant karma elderberries. There's one right beyond the crab apple on the other end. And then there's one on the right hand side. In fact, let me, let's just rock down there and see it. There's some other beautiful things down here too. You can see the delphiniums as we go by. These are starting to open as well. These are called guardian white. And of course they're not at their full size like what they would normally be, but once they are established and they come up next season, they'll be taller. In fact, I'll probably get a second bloom out of them, out of them this season. That's a lot taller. So you can, oh, look at this one. That one's already all the way bloomed, like almost all. There's a couple buds left on the bottom, but look how beautiful that is. But this right here is the Instant Karma Elderberry. And so I didn't want there to be too much yellow in this space. So I kind of put positioned that spirea about midway down. But I've got beautiful, like this is a limelight hydrangea. We've already done videos showing you the Daisy May daisies and the white wand spirea down there and the uh, firefly diamond achillea yarrow. So anyway, it's just a really fun space. So let's go down here and get this shrub planted.
I think it looks really cute, even though it's pretty small right now. I mean, imagine it three to four feet tall and wide, just this beautiful, soft, fluffy shrub. And this color of yellow, supposedly, now, like I said, this is the first time I've ever grown it, takes full sun and keeps its color all season long, even in the sun. Um, so I think that that's a really great thing because this area is very sunny. Our, we do have red point maples planted right across the brick sidewalk from me, like right in front of me, but they're small and they're not casting much shade yet. And once they're mature, we'll probably have to, uh, you know, kind of make this garden evolve into a little bit more of a part shade garden. Um, but this plant, I think will be very happy right here. Now it's a zone three through nine. So incredibly win winter hardy, uh, resistant to deer. Uh, so I think it kind of solves problems for maybe some of you guys who are dealing with those types of things in your garden. We don't typically deal with deer or rabbits in our garden, thankfully. Um, we do deal with gophers quite often, uh, but they don't tend to take after our spirea roots, which is nice. And in terms of care, just consistent moisture. I mean, this area, of course, you can see the drip tubing in this area. So I'm able to water this however much I feel like it needs in this space. And always takes a season usually to figure out exactly what the plant wants in the space where you put it. Um, so we always keep a really sharp eye on our new plants, especially these bloom on old wood, which means the only time you would want to trim this shrub, if at all, is right after they're done blooming in the spring. So as soon as all these buds um, form their blooms and they're all kind of fizzled out, if you want to size control your shrub or trim it up a certain way, you'll do it right after those blooms fade. Um, now it's best on things that bloom on old wood just to put them in a location where you can let them grow to their full size. Um, and that's typically what I like to do. I have another spirea actually in this same bed. I forgot to show you on the far end. It's a blue kazoo spirea, which I'm super excited about. It's another one that stays a little bit smaller, more compact and has a really nice shape, but it has more blue tint to its leaves. So I think it'll be really fun to see these different spireas in this space. So anyway, that's it for this video. I know we didn't do a whole lot, but I really wanna show you every time we put something new in this space, I want to talk about it and kind of go through my thought process and why I'm putting what where, uh, because I mean, they're all interesting plants and there's always something new to learn about um, about plants. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm excited to show you updates of it as the season progresses and we will see you in the next one. Bye.